Hello. Today I'm here to talk about a film turning th <clears throat> 20 years old. A film I saw when I was 5 years old on my birthday, even though technically it came out three days after. But for a special engagement throughout the country, I got to see it early. And. <clears throat> part of a franchise I love, and obviously by the title and everything, you know what I'm talking about. And that is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Ooh, came in this little thing. I used to have them all in normal DVD packaging, but uh, I gave those to my mother, who also likes Star Wars. And I got these, because they're quite affordable. got the original trilogy as well, so they're like that. Pretty cool. I think. Whatever. Um, I do keep I did keep the bonus disc for the original trilogy though. Uh, she didn't really mind that, so on that end, but okay, that aside, um it's twenty years ago I saw this film on this day first Star Wars film I ever saw in my entire life on the big screen. And I loved it. I loved it then, and I love it now. I don't really want to necessarily go all into <laughs> detail about it, but really, the plot is actually alright. Um, two Jedi <clears throat> are on a mission to Uh, get the queen out of a situation of being forced to sign some things that she, you know doesn't necessarily that she wouldn't agree with, but is being would be forced to by uh, the Trade Federation, which <coughs> is really all a bunch of bub kiss anyway. A lot of people have a problem with the Trade Federation, but that was all a bunch of bull uh, devised by Palpatine. Who, as we all know, is the Emperor. The two Jedi's were quite, are Qui Gon Jinn and uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. And the Queen, you know, Padme Amidala. Um, <clears throat> they meet Anakin Skywalker. And from there, you know, you know, the film is a lot of fun. I've always had a lot of fun with the, the Star Wars films, the first six Star <coughs> Star Wars films. Really, um, I've been critical of the new episodes. And I wanted to like them though, but you know there was a was a, uh, there was a period of my, of time where I wasn't as fond of this film as I once was. I mean, I still enjoyed it and you know I loved it, but I didn't love it as much as I did when I was a kid. But then again, I think that was because a whole bunch of people around that time as a <coughs> teenager were like, "Oh, you suck!" I was like, "Oh." Well. Okay, and I wasn't really able to really articulate my thoughts on the matter as well as I am now. So now I'd be able to discuss it a lot better and even defend it uh, with uh, dialogue. Um, it's always been clunky from the very first film, the original episode four. Been clunky uh, always. <clears throat> Not sure why that's a surprise people. Um, but then again, just good acting, you know, kind of helped with that. And some do criticize Attack of the Clones with corny dialogue, with the romantic stuff. Uh, you know, that'll be for another time, but, you know, uh, I kind of addressed that. My original first video I ever did of a retrospective of the or, uh, original s six Star Wars films. I also want to apologize <coughs> for that. Excuse me again. Because in that video I kind of went off on pe people who hated the prequels because it was really just frustration of how people just still continuously attack George Lucas in the films. and It was, it was just like it's so pathetic and stupid. That's really what I was trying to get out, but I don't know, thinking back, I'm like, you know, that was probably dumb of me to go off 
on people who go off on George Lucas still. But I don't know. It was a lot. Of, it was frustration I've had over the years. I guess I just let it out there. Um, I don't know. Perhaps to some people it's not that extreme, like some get. But I don't know. For me, for how I conduct these videos, yeah, I don't know. I guess I see it as extreme. I haven't really watched it since then because I don't know. I don't really like rewatching my own stuff. I rewatch it, you know, beforehand where it's like rendered and all before I render it and after I render it and everything before I upload it and then after that that's really that's it don't watch it again uh, I don't contribute to the views on my own stuff it's very space for you to look at comments if I if I receive one so I never have to go to my own you know video and it plays so but yeah I just love the Phantom Menace I know that was a bit of a little tangent, sort of off-topic, but I just want to apologize if you've ever seen that video, or do see that, I might link it here, I don't know. I've been thinking about linking videos, but I just haven't, never say I will in the video, so I guess because of that, I don't think about it later on. Uh, so I might, if you don't see it, there's a playlist on my channel, if you go to the bottom, it's the very first one, you can select, it says Film Talk. And you can go and watch all the videos in episode four. That's when I talk about uh, the the Star Wars. Uh, uh, plus, in those days, I was still trying to figure out what I wanted, how to, to conduct the series. I have no clue back then. Anyway, I still don't. But I like to just ramble on about whatever. No review, no nothing like that. Just talk. And I just love the Phantom Menace. I know people hate Jar Jar Binks, which at this point is a stupid thing to complain about. I mean, I don't like some of the new characters, but I just I don't like them for this reason and that reason. The end. Not really going to go anymore. But people seem to really hate Jar Jar with a passion. They can never let it go. They can't accept the fact that it's for kids. And that these films are supposed to have a balance of stuff for both kids and adults. <coughs> and I understand some of the stuff here in the new films is supposed to have that too, but I don't know. I, for me, it doesn't really work like back when George Lucas was doing Star Wars. Here, I f find it it works real well. As an adult, I still don't mind Jar Jar. I love Jar Jar a lot more as a kid, but, you know, he's fine. Never hated Anakin. To me, he acted like a kid, because I'm like, he's a, he's a kid. How else is he supposed to act? He's supposed to act like all intelligent stuff. I've heard some people do do have said that he should have been an adult in this film, or at least a teenager. Which I can kind of see an argument there, but I don't know. We'll never see that, though. <coughs> and with a machete order, I disagree completely, because... There are certain things in this film that if you don't see, you'll never get the context for when certain things are shown in the next film. For instance, you know, his mother. In episode two, Anakin's mother dies. And while you would care because it's Anakin's mom, you wouldn't really care that much because, well, you never saw the you know, bond they had. You never saw how much he loved his mom and also hesitating and leaving Tatooine possibly forever to never return and to never see her again. When he leaves Tatooine, you know, all that stuff and even other things, you wouldn't care. You, that's just the big thing I that comes to my mind. You wouldn't really care that much. Except, oh, it's Anakin. He's Darth Vader. And, oh, it's sad. He misses his mom. But then when you hear things also kind of contradict certain things like, you know, how Jedi's are never supposed to have love or feelings and this and that, which they have dialogue in <coughs> episode two about that. Can never love, can never feel happiness, anger, sadness, so on. And I think this also helps in episode one, helps that in the future films, because, you know, he's too old to be a Jedi, they say. You know, he has all these feelings that Jedi's are never supposed to have. And, uh, 
Qui-Gon Qui -Gon is trying to teach Obi-Wan it's okay to like have feelings, but really to keep them in check. And so from this film, and then later on when he fails Anakin, when he becomes Darth Vader, you can kind of see why uh, Obi-Wan's approach of teaching Luke uh, is the way it is, because they learned, you know, that way is not the best way. There's other ways, and they were pretty closed-minded about it. I think this film really uh, uh, introduces that very well, uh, especially for the downside, downfall of Anakin into Darth Vader, which also led to the rise of the Empire. That's just one thing. The machete order, <coughs> excluding episode one. I never liked it, but, you know, whatever. Um, I'll just watch the original six. In any order I want. <clears throat> original trilogy first. Prequel trilogy first. Doesn't matter to me. <coughs> Again, sorry. I'm sick. Trying to ensure I don't cough as often. And I am controlling that as best I can. Did that a lot better earlier. when I Later when I made that last video. So coming back I feel it's sort of I'm getting over this cold and sometimes you know getting over a cold sometimes it tries to hit you a lot harder than before as it's just getting out of your system just trying to have like one more thing to try and keep you sick but uh, now nah, you don't care about my uh, health stuff but apologies again for that and yeah, uh, I just love episode one. Don't care what anyone says. It's a fine film. It is my fifth favorite film of the series. Episode two is my fourth favorite. Three is my th third. Empire and Jedi are tied for second. And the original Star Wars is my favorite film of the series. As well as my favorite film of all time. But yeah. I love The Phantom Menace. I love the setup. Love Darth Maul. Great character. Would have been great to see him more. But we didn't. But there are, you know, the Clone Wars. The episodes there that we see him. They're pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, the Darth Jar Jar, which I talked about once before. You know, those are... Fun theory. Could be real. Could have been possible. And if done after episode <coughs> one, real to two, would have been epic. Done right, most likely would have eclipsed I Am Your Father, no doubt. But we'll never know. Because, you know, George Lucas listened to the fans. They didn't... Or, the people who are the most vocal online weren't happy with Jar Jar, so... Jar Jar was cut out. And that should also make you wonder. What 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 did he plan for Jar Jar to do in this series? Because because you don't introduce a character like Jar Jar Binks and have his presence be the way it is, as big as it as it is and important to him, because he is an important character. You don't have uh, him have all that screen time and then reduce him to having uh minor role or a cameo in the next two films. You just don't do that. Clearly there was something he wanted to do, but never did. Would have loved to have known what that was. But we'll never know now. Uh, and I doubt he will ever reveal. Because I think in his mind, they don't care. fans don't care. Fans don't care. Fans told him he was horrible and awful for making the prequels. Just a downright horrible human being, and uh, could have been <coughs> a big factor in selling Disney, selling it to his company to Disney. Not the main factor, but a big one. It's just <coughs> sad. 
<coughs> should have just gone with what he wanted. Uh, you know, to hell what the fans think. Because perhaps, you know, there's a reason for this. And if executed incredibly well, it would have been worth it. But we'll never know now. Uh, <coughs> yeah, there's a little rant there, I guess. But yeah, my thoughts really haven't changed. If anything, looking back on the prequels now and rewatching them, as I've done so here, I still love them. I love them even more now. Uh, my appreciation has grown so much. As much as the original trilogy, really. I think it'd be fair to say. Though I do like the original trilogy a bit, <coughs> a bit more. For various reasons. One, the original Star Wars is my favorite film of all time. <coughs> and what I would say is the best film of all time. And it's also... film that I just love, but, you know, with the prequels, for me, I, it helps enhance that film even more. That's me. You can disagree if you'd like. That's fine. But, I just, I just love The Phantom Menace. Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite character <coughs> in this trilogy. And, uh, I just love Ewan McGregor and his performance. He's fantastic. He's a fantastic in every single thing he's ever done. <coughs> and for me, this is my favorite role of his. It's my favorite performance. He really convinces me. He's like, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> he has a young Alec Guinness with each passing film in this trilogy. So, kudos to him. Kudos for the uh, <clears throat> the rest of the cast, you have Ian McDermott, that's uh, Palpatine, Frank Oz, Yoda, Liam Neeson, Jake Lloyd, Nellie Portman, Ahmed Best, Kenny Baker, um, Anthony Daniels, uh, Terrence Stamp, so many people in this film. George Lucas, uh, Ben Burt, John, you know, John Williams, uh, George Lucas. I repeated <laughs> them, but you know, it, <coughs> sometimes some people are just worth repeating. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. I know a bit of a ramble here and there, and me coughing. Apologies again for that, but. I hope this was fun, a good video. This is just my my thoughts 20 years later after seeing it on the big screen. Loving it at 5 years old, still love it at 25. Your opinions on the film? Uh, have they changed? Have they stayed the same? Are you sort of indifferent? You don't need to comment, but you can if you want. So anyway... Uh, that's all I have to say here. See you all next time. Hope you all have a good day, a good weekend, and a good next week. See you all again next time. Goodbye.